very well welcome to yet another interesting edition of the program CAC Weekly, a weekly program that keeps you abreast on the activities and achievements of the Corporate Affairs Commission. My name is Omar Hefe, Peace of Semeri. Coming up, company dissolution comes under focus. Sports development set to receive a boost in CAC, plus how to register a company on your own. We will be right back. Welcome back. Let's begin on a sporting moment. The Registrar General and CEO of the CAC, Husseini Ishaq Magaji SAN, says sports development will be accorded top priority in the commission. He was receiving the CAC Sports Committee under the leadership of Glory ASEAN, Director of Budget, Planning, Research and Statistics. The CAC boss charged members to be innovative and creative in the discharge of their assignment. The Registrar General, who is also an active badminton player, enjoined the committee to prioritize monthly sport events for the CAC to maintain a healthy workforce, as well as sensitize the public on the Commission's activities using the instrument of sport. Speaking earlier, the Chairman of the Sports Committee, Glory ACN, Director BPRS, thanked the Registrar General for her reappointment along with four other members and the appointment of an additional two members. Glory ASEAN pledged their commitment and determination to improve the performance of the Commission in sporting events, especially the annual public service games, amongst others. CSE News reports that the reconstituted sports committee consists of Mrs. Glory ASEAN as chairman and Lukman Salman as secretary. Other members include Inkechi Osakwe, Rashid Mahi, Temilade Oladipo, Abdukadir Salisudora, and Raymond John Oti. Congratulations and best wishes to the team. And now, company post incorporation matters. Do you know that a company can be dissolved after formation? Dissolution has widely been described as a process to bring about the end of an unwanted company. When a company has been dissolved, it ceases to exist as a legal entity. While all activities will stop, the company's name will be removed from the register and will have no further status to file any document. So, what happens to a company when it is dissolved? Is there a difference between dissolution and liquidation? What is the dissolution process and circumstances for the dissolution? For answers to these questions and more, let's join Justin Media Barrow. CAC's Director, Compliance, in our interview segment. Enjoy watching. Uh, Mr. Media, Justin Barrow, Director, Compliance. Many thanks for joining us again, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, so today we are talking about dissolution of companies. I know it's not new. It's something people are familiar with. But we are going to go into the details of what this dissolution is all about. But before we go into that, maybe for the purpose of those who are listening to us, or for those who are be thinking, what is what, what kind of dissolutions are this one talking about? But what is it all about? Well, uh, dissolution basically is uh, a process that terminates the life of uh, the company. Mm. What we will notice, therefore, is that just like uh, registration, or pre uh, pre incorporation mm. breathe life into a company. Okay. Dissolution snuffs life out okay. of your company. So in simple terms, that's what it is. Snuffing of life out of the company. Yeah, death of your company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. At what point is the company dead? Well, a company is presumed. Or at what point does a company die? 
a company is presumed to be dead when it is dissolved. That's okay. why we said initially mm. that uh, dissolution mm. is like death to the company. But there must be some criteria, isn't it? Yes. Uh, or some symptoms yes. before the company dies. Yes. Uh, what we will note is that uh, the process of dissolution or dissolution itself mm. could arise in three scenarios. Okay. One, uh, when what is called striking off okay. is undertaken. And previously we have discussed that striking off could be voluntary, it could be composite. Yes. So we are going into the component of dissolution itself. Yes, we are going into the component okay. of dissolution. Okay. Now we have already mentioned that striking off mm. is one of the processes that could lead to dissolution. Mm. Another process that could lead to dissolution is what we call winding off. Okay. Yes, and uh, winding off could also be voluntary, it could be composite. Okay, is this something as liquidation? Yes, liquidation, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Then yes. uh, the third one is. Uh, when a company is usually convicted of an offense. Okay. That could okay. also lead to Okay. Okay. Yes. Before we go into the voluntary and non voluntary, which one is popular? Liquidation, striking off, and um, what do you call the third one? Conviction. Conviction. Uh, so which one is more popular? The one that is popular is uh, <laughs> what we call liquidation. Okay. Because that's uh, the one you hear every day. Uh, that's the one that has been popular. It's peculiar to banks, isn't it? Not really banks. Any okay. other company. Okay. But most times it's banks we hear. Yes, because uh -huh. uh, of our past experience. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh before just like um, you know, um I'm I'm not going out of our topic, but um the CBM came up with guidelines for recapitalization and people are the you know the discussion uh, you know, in public domain is that some of the banks might not be able to meet up with the new um, you know, guidelines. So we're going to see many of them, we're going to see mergers, we're going to see some going up, some being struck up, or some being liquidated. Where will this, where will be, what will be the CAC be doing at that particular point in time? Well, uh, in the process of capitalization, CAC could come at... Uh, Three, three levels. Okay. When you talk of mergers and acquisition, mm. uh, CAC will be involved. Because okay. what it means is that uh, means one, one, change, uh, one, one bank mm. that is stronger will take mm. over another Swallow one. The uh, ones, yeah. Then the other one could possibly be uh, dissolved, okay. usually without winding up. Mm. Then uh, if you also talk of uh, maybe raising capital from uh, the capital market, mm. Uh, and uh, probably at that instance, the issued share capital of the bank mm. is not enough to accommodate new shareholders. Mm. Then you will be talking about increases. Okay. Then at the end of the day, uh, when you have done the increases, it is also expected that you do what is called return of allotment, okay. uh, which gives a list of uh, the new shareholders mm. that have bought into the the capital of the company. Okay, so that means extra work for CAC. Yes, extra, Any work, from now, uh, yeah. extra work for CAC mm. and extra work for other stakeholders that will be involved. And in extra company. money too. Well, yes, <laughs> in a sense, yes. Uh, okay, okay. But do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's coming at the right time? Um, you know, recapitalization of banks. I think it's long overdue. Okay. Uh, particularly in the light of the background that. Uh, uh, our, our currency mm. has uh, uh, undergone what is uh, considered as devaluation. Okay. And uh, some of the banks actually need to also increase their mm. share capital so that they could be playing at both uh, national and international level. Mm. Because if they were to lend mm. at uh, international level and uh, the lending uh, could come, in foreign currency, you will discover that their capital may not support. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our main issues and look at um, liquidation as a component. Yeah. Uh, we have the voluntary and non, you know, voluntary. So let's go to, let's start with the voluntary. Yes. Uh, I just look up one money and I say I'm tired of doing this business. Yes. And I want uh, to close it. Yeah. Yes. In most situations, when you talk of uh, voluntary mm. liquidation, 
it is assumed that uh, it is initiated actually by shareholders of the company. Mm. And usually uh, its uh, most distinctive character is that unlike the other forms of liquidation, mm. in this circumstance you are saying that the company is buoyant, but that uh, one, either you have achieved the objective mm. for which you set up the company, mm. in which case continuation is no longer necessary for you, or two, that the company was also uh, set up for a specific time, and that time has come, in which case uh, you now consider liquidating the company, or it was set up for a specific project, mm. and that project has been executed, and therefore there is no need to continue with managing the company. So in uh, these cases that we have uh, identified, mm. Uh, shareholders of the company normally considers uh, what is called voluntary liquidation of the company. Okay. And in such scenario, you are not saying that the company is bankrupt, it cannot pay its debt, but that it can pay its debt at least within one year when okay. the, commence, when the uh, voluntary liquidation process commences. Okay. Yes. Okay. Your yeah, answer is, is the most honorable thing to do. Yes, uh, if, for instance, you establish a company to pursue a specific object mm. and that object has been achieved, okay. then there will be no need to continue to run the company. The most okay. honorable thing is mm. you wind up the company and if you think you want to pursue other lines of business, mm. then you can do that. Or if you want to think you want to take a break, then you are also free to take a break. So and the law allows that you can just set up a company to pursue a particular purpose, and after that you wind up. Oh yes, the law allows that. In okay. as much as also it is assumed that you establish a company and the company will continue to run mm. until its life is not out of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go to the non-voluntary. That's where a lot of issues are, isn't it? Well, That's where it is being the company is being forced to die. Yes. Uh, a compulsory liquidation yeah. uh, is uh, not usually what is conceived by the shareholders or mm. the directors. So what other issues are under? Well, uh, the, the, the most important thing to note is that uh, the compulsory winding up mm. is usually a judicial process. Okay. Yes, because uh, uh, the Federal High Court is involved mm. and uh, a specific rule that governs the winding up. It mm. is called uh, winding up rules of the Federal High Court. So any uh, person that desires to file a petition for winding up of the company mm. will usually apply to the Federal High Court mm. and uh, is in stages. You go to stage one, they will give you approval to publish the petition for winding up. Mm. Then they will take a day that is called a return date at which a decision will be made mm. as to whether to wind up the company or not. Mm. Uh, then if a decision is taken to wind up the company, then a liquidator will be appointed. And then the liquidator will now oversee the process of gathering the assets and liabilities of the company, pay the liabilities, and uh, if something is left at the end of the day, pay what is called liquidation dividend. Okay. So that, in summary, is a process of compulsory uh, liquidation. So it takes a whole lot of time? Uh, it takes time in the sense that... What uh, is the time frame from start to finish? It, it will be difficult so the timing, uh, yeah. to determine, seeing that uh, it has to go through a court process, you start the court process, and uh, all other relevant things have to be complied with. So, but the, comp the directors of the company can frustrate the process, isn't it? They can frustrate the regulator. Uh, no, it's not uh, the regulator per se. Yes, the regulator is one of uh, the persons that have been authorized mm. to file petition for winding up of a company. But uh, usually, uh, the most popular one is that uh, you wind up a company for its inability to pay its debt mm. as and when due. And How do you know that a company cannot meet up its liability of paying its debt? Well, that is defined by law. 
Okay. Uh, and at what point does that occur? The law specifically says that uh, if there is a demand mm. on a company uh, and uh, the company has not been able to pay a debt that is up to 200000 because that is the amount that has now been fixed by law, mm. that uh, there must have been a debt that is up to 200000 mm. and there must have been a demand on that company and that company has failed to pay. to pay that 200 or above. Just 200,000? 200,000. Minimum? That's the minimum. Okay. It could be more than that. So once you can't pay 200,000? Once you can't pay 200,000. 200,000. Uh, 200, mm. uh, within a specified period of time. Period of time. Like? Uh, usually uh, a period of two weeks to one month. Okay. Uh, if they serve the demand on you and you fail to pay, mm. then that gives a ground for somebody to apply to the federal high court for okay. compulsory one year. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So just 200,000? 200, 200,000. That's what is fixed. But That's not life out of the company. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. yes. So what are some of the challenges when it comes to liquidation itself, either voluntary or non-voluntary or compulsory or not compulsory? What we have noted over time, mm. particularly with respect to uh, voluntary winding up, mm is that uh, uh, people hardly get the documentation right. Mm -hmm. That's the way it has come into <laughs> yes. So they can go with their things hidden <laughs> without letting the card out of the bag. No, not in that sense. Because what you note over the time mm. is that, uh, particularly for the voluntary winding up, mm. is a three-stage process. Okay. And there are uh, uh, specified timelines for each of the activities. Yes. So what you find out most often is that people mumble up the timeline and therefore uh, you end up raising so many queries on application for voluntary winding mm. up, mm. which uh, a, a more understanding of the process could have actually eliminated most of the challenges. Mm, okay. Yes. Now, first of all, uh, what you are required to do basically when you want to start uh, voluntary winding up, you determine that the company is buoyant. And how do you determine it? You do what is called uh, uh, statutory declare, uh, declaration of solvency. Okay. Under that statutory declaration of solvency, you are telling the whole world that the company within one year of the commencement of uh, voluntary winding up will be able to pay all its debt. So that basically is the first foundation. Now, after you have filed that statement, you are required within five weeks from the time you made the statutory declaration mm. to pass a resolution that the company should be wind up. Okay. And you now appoint, by way of that special resolution, a liquidator. Okay. So these are the usually technical areas that okay. uh, that uh, problems are usually encountered. Mm. So somebody cannot just quietly stop operating a company and disappear? No, ordinarily you can't do that. Mm, for, right. For, for the reason that... Uh, you said I can take a break now. I don't uh, need to write to you officially. I can just quietly stop operation. Well, the consequence and is that uh, your statutory obligations or statutory debt will continue to run and the company will continue. So what if I don't have debt? If you don't have debt, mm. why? I'm not owing anybody. Uh, it, it's difficult in that circumstance because unless you uh, pay annual returns mm -hmm. or you make the other necessary returns to other regulators, mm then uh, you could hardly find a situation in which a company would not have what is called a statutory debt. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's impossible and just to walk away quietly yes. or go down quietly. No, the implication also is that <laughs> if you remain silent, mm. after some time, uh, the company will be due for striking up, which we have discussed previously. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we are entering into two areas. Yes. One striking up by next month. I don't know if the commission is going to extend it or not. And two, the recapitalization from the CVN. So what are the messages, the message, I mean, sorry, that you have, you know, for this 
companies or would be companies that will be affected either way? Well, uh, first especially capitalization from the CVS, so a lot of liquidation is going to happen. Not really, like okay. we said. Okay. Uh, because if you look at the banks themselves, there are not too many. There are not more than 100. Okay. Yes. And uh, it is not possible that all the banks will be liquidated because of the recapitalization. What about if we have a case of 50? 50. Mm -hmm. Half uh, of it. Uh, that one will still not be uh, worrisome. Okay. Uh, but uh, even that, I'm not too sure. Okay. Uh, that uh, will even have up to that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the striking off? Well, striking off is uh, is actually a routine process mm. of operations of, of, of the commission. Mm. Because, uh, first of all, it could arise in two scenarios. One, there is the one that is automatic. Uh, if your company has not filed an return for a period of 10 years, mm. that automatically qualifies it. To the striking of the register of companies. Then, apart from that, what many people don't understand also is that uh, you don't have to wait actually for a period of ten years to strike off the name of a company. If the commission has reason to suspect that a company is not carrying on business, then it can send a letter of inquiry. Uh, later now, in our age, mm -hmm. who could be. Uh, Hard copy. Okay. It or could be soft copy. It, it, it could soft copy. Mm. So if you send a letter of inquiry to inquire whether the company is carrying uh, on operation, and there is no response, then the commission is entitled to assume that the company is not carrying on business. Mm. In which case, it could go ahead and uh, strike the name of the company. Okay. Or if you send a letter and the person responds that yes. It's not carrying on business, then you could also uh, strike off the name of the company. So, okay. what people should note is that that 10 years is not mandatory. Um, I know that um, the solution of companies is a very touchy issue and we can go on and on and on, but we must have to leave it here. Thank you very much, sir, for your time as always. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh. Thanks for that informative segment. Mr. Justin. Now, let's show you how to form a company on your own. Company registration. To begin, reserve the company name that you intend to register and then proceed to click on Start Registration to begin. Step 1. Enter the details of the company. Click on Save and Continue. Step 2. Add the objects of the company. Click on Save and Continue. Step 3. On the Articles of Association, you can either create your own Articles of Association or simply adopt the default Articles of Association provided. You can also edit each part of the default Articles of Association to fit your company's purpose. Click on Save and Continue. Step 4. On the Directors, enter the details of at least one Director. If you want to hide your residential address from public record, Click on the Hide Residential Address from Public Record Toggle button. Click on Save and Continue. Step 5. Under Secretary. This requirement is optional for small companies and you may skip the step by clicking on the Click Here link button to proceed. However, if you wish to add a secretary, click on the Add Secretary button, enter the details of the secretary and click on Save and Continue. Step 6. Understatement of issued share capital. Add the share details and enter details of proprietor and click on save and continue. Note, you must allot the entire issued share capital. Step 7. On the persons with significant control. Enter the particulars of the person with significant control of the company. Step 8. Understatement of compliance. If you are an applicant or an accredited agent other than a legal practitioner, fill in your details and click on save and continue or you can skip this step. On the document upload, scan and upload all the documents labeled yes under the if required column and where the documents labeled optional applies to you, please scan and upload to avoid a query on your application. Click on save and continue to preview. Step 9. Preview your entries and if satisfied, click on the proceed to payment in order to make payment. 
Remember to remain on the remitter page after you have received a confirmation of payment. Step 11. After payment, you will be redirected to your dashboard where you will make payment for your stamp duty. After making payment, your application will enter the pending panel on your dashboard on the registration. When your registration has been approved, your certificate will be automatically generated on your registered panel where you can download and print it. Wow, so easy. What are you waiting for? Hurry now to pre.cac.gov.ng to form your own company. And that does it for this week's edition of the program CAC Weekly. We do hope you enjoyed watching. For comments and inquiries, please take advantage of our social media handles and call center at X, formerly Twitter, at CAC Nigeria 1, Instagram and Facebook at Corporate Affairs Commission. Send us an email at helpdesk at cac.gov.ng. And you can check us on our website at www.cac.gov.ng. Our call center number is 0708-0629-000. To join us next week for another interesting edition of the program, same time, same station. From me, Omoyfe, Peace of Semere, and the whole team is bye for now.